morning, everyone. Uh, today, I want to talk to you about a really good question from one of our Rumpler community members, Jason McCarthy, who said, how do you know the right thing to do to proceed and progress multiple business opportunities rather than focus on a single opportunity and grow and scale that to fulfil your ambitions and goals? So, uh, really good question. Morning, mate. So, uh, it's a really good question, and it's, it's one that's a little bit annoying because I already answered this question. This is the re record, and the uh, audio on the previous record failed, so I'm having to, to record two episodes today. But anyway, no problem. So, uh, it's a uh, Sunday morning, and uh, Sunday is all things about personal life, personal development, personal education, and this is quite a personal question, really, in terms of it, there is a little bit of theory and stuff behind it to how and why I do this. And uh, I'll share with you, but um, a lot of this comes down to choice. A lot of this comes down to personal goals and whether your goals and ambitions can be fulfilled with one opportunity. Now, I argue with myself on multiple occasions with this one. Pure and simply because technically if uh, a business that you're setting up cannot fulfill the ambitions and goals that you set, then you have to question whether it's the right business opportunity, whether the market's big enough, because um, you know you, you need to go into it with your eyes open. I mean, starting, starting one business is hard enough, let alone multiple. However, my, my thought process this has changed, and it now changes based on the following criteria. So, do I believe each and every one of my um, business opportunities can uh, fulfill my goals and ambitions? Yes, I do. However, They've each got slightly different goals and ambitions depending on what the, the business is. Well, for example, the property business, the goal is predominantly legacy, leaving a legacy to my children, giving them and their children's children a, a kind of a decent start in life. You know, I think it's, it's harder and harder for young people in this world. And uh, I think we had it, my generation, I'll say that, had it harder than our, my parents' generation. But um, I think our children are going to have it harder than us. Um, and our children should possibly even harder than them. So it's, uh, you, know, you can look at it in terms of the cost of house buying in relation to wages, etc. And, uh, you know, there hasn't been a, a, a very linked relationship when you factor in back in my parents' generation compared to, to ours. The gap was significantly smaller in terms of the cost of the house in comparison to wages. Um, back in my parents' generation compared to what it is now. So uh, I think that's really, really important. Jake, come on, mate. This is Jake. This is one of the dad's running buddies. He's, uh, he's a young up and coming runner. He obviously likes the camera because most people run a mile when they see this. But uh, where have you been, Jake? Just around to around to the back, mate. You can come with me to Haddenham and back if you want. Uh, nice to see you, mate. I'll tag you in. <laughs> and, uh, dad's, uh, he's a really, really entrepreneurial guy, actually. actually I'll, uh, I will interview him on one of these guys because he is an uh, 18 year old lad. Like, he he uh, inherited his uh, grandfather's business, which was his late grandfather's last away, um, which is called New Newnham Christmas Street. And he built this Christmas tree business hut. It's this massive business. Very seasonal, like, but. And uh, he goes to six form and uh, yeah, he's almost set for life, whereas all of his, uh, his little buddies now still trying to find their way in the world. He's actually mentoring others on entrepreneurship, so what a cool dude. Anyway, back to the question. So it's, um, so yeah, so the, the problem is, is the goal was providing a, a legacy that I can pass down. The other businesses are going to be predominantly cash flow focused, so they're going to be cash cows. The property business can also be a cash cow, although um, it's, it's, it's old focus used to be that, whereas it's the new focus is more geared towards legacy planning for the children, etc. So, uh, so that's kind of how things, you have to look at the individual business and what you're trying to achieve with them. So there is a difference between what the property business will give as opposed to the online businesses. So, uh, 
as the one, but my rule is very simple. Like, I used to follow a, a, a famous quote by Richard Branson. I thought it was brilliant, but it's such a flawed, flawed statement for the small business owner. For the big multinational corporate, different story, maybe. But for the small business owner, or micro business owner, you know, the, the quote was, if uh, an opportunity presents itself, just say yes. And learn the rest later. And that's a uh, switch of Branson, so we might disagree with him. But for someone of his stature, with his infrastructure, hundreds of thousands of people around him to bring opportunities and ideas to market, he's probably got innovation departments within his group and just focus on bringing the opportunities to the market. So that's a very different infrastructure to micro business owner John Smith, who's got, who is himself. He's trying to run one business, let alone saying yes to the opportunity. So I used to follow that and it was heavily flawed for me because it would mean that my focus was diluted so much so that I was never making any traction with any of the business. So I'm really, really keen to avoid that. So how do you avoid that when you're being, becoming a serial entrepreneur and starting multiple business? Well, the easy solution is to start a business, you know, set it all up, get the infrastructure in place, get it profitable, Systemize it so you're no longer involved or no longer involved in the day to day. Step away, then start the next. And then you have a an income as close to being passive as it can be. But there's another cool topic here is that passive income doesn't exist. Any passive income, when you factor in the work that went in initially, to, to make it passive, it would have been anything but passive. So that's just food for thought. Maybe I'll do a separate episode on that. But anyway. So um, that would be the ideal way. Build your business, get the infrastructure, get the resource, capacity, all in place, systems, processes, reporting, step out. And uh, when you step out, you have a possible business move on to the next. However, life doesn't follow the same agenda that you might have on the same timeline. So you may get opportunities that present themselves at the worst time. That is why I'm working, building on four different businesses at the moment because the opportunities presented themselves are in good synergy with what I'm doing um, but in an ideal world I would like to have finished one with more people moving on to the other so how do you make that choice well, for me there's two kind of questions I ask does it does the opportunity fit into my existing distribution channels and does it also fit into my existing marketing channels and uh, if it does a significant proportion of the work is already done or predominantly done, you just need to tweak and do a bit of setup. So, really important to understand that. So, I will not consider anything unless it fits into my existing world, my distribution channels and sales channels, if you like to call them, and marketing channels. The world is revolves around marketing these days, so marketing channels is super, super important if you're going to get a business off the ground and I love this statement that um, basically if you have the crappiest product in the world for the best marketing you will be a multi-millionaire. If you have the best product in the world, shit marketing, you'll barely be able to scrape a living. So there's a, uh, a lot to learn in that statement alone which is why it's so important to think about the importance of a, of a marketing channel. So when I look at my opportunities, well First, I have the property business, okay? This is the legacy business. The business that I've built over the past 15 years or so. And, uh, but then I systemized that, okay? So this doesn't really have the same distribution and, and marketing channels as the other businesses, but I'd already systemized that. You know, you've heard the, the story where I went from working 60 hours plus a week on that business to less than 30 minutes a week. So um, that is systemized. Okay, I'm back involved in it because I'm tweaking and iterating and consolidating a few things at the moment. But I could not focus on that at all, it would still run without me. Okay, so that's, that is systematic. So, the next business I started was Property Empire Builder, which is the property coaching business. Well, the reason I started that is because my previous business was systems outsourcing. And uh, the existing infrastructure was set up there, sales, marketing, distribution channels, geared towards online coaching. So converting that across to uh, online property coaching was very 
straightforward. When I say straightforward, it's all obviously still got teething issues, but compared to staying something up from scratch, it was far, far easier. Okay, so that's how that one slotted in. We then had the, the, the uh, opportunity to start sourcing deals as one of our clients became one of our business partners with the relationships he formed in the property sourcing world. That we then decided we were going to lose that. Well, already we have an existing list of property interested people. So straight away, there's a, there's a link there. It's a very similar market. If people are interested in property, whether they're going to buy deals or whether they're going to buy education, there are, there are, there's a synergy there in the list. So that's really important. And uh, morning. Secondly, the um, the marketing channels we set up. We already market to property people, so it's quite easy to market a different message to using the existing infrastructure set up for marketing in the property coaching business. So again, it fits there, and uh, it also links with the importance of trying to create. This is something I haven't added yet. I should have added it earlier. The importance of adding fixed income and variable income into your income streams. I'll talk more about this on a separate episode, but fixed is more like rental income, subscription-based income. So recurring revenue is quite easy to predict. And the variable income is the kind of chunky cash which comes in on an ad hoc basis, so on a per sale, sale basis. So this is where the property sourcing stuff comes in. And the answer, which is better, is neither. The, the power is when you have both of them coming in, and you also have them matched to the same cost base, i.e. fixed income matched to fixed cost, and uh, variable income matched to variable cost. That means that you are pre predominantly recession proof. I'll talk about that in more detail in a separate episode. I'm learning this from Josh Keegan and the profit, uh, the, uh, profit process at the moment, which is amazing. So. That's, uh, that's another thing to consider. Lots of things to consider here. And then the final business is the Rumpreneur vlog, which is going to be turned into the content repurposing social media agency. <laughs> now, this is a little bit of a curveball. However, this started, I would not have strategized and said a few months ago that I'm just going to go and do this, start this content repurposing social media agency, purely and simply because it's not really that aligned. With what I'm doing. It is in, the, in regards to my list in terms of property or business people who are on my list. A lot of them understand the importance of marketing on social media. A lot of people don't have the time to do it. So, really important that there is a synergy there with the list. That's the other one I didn't add. Um, distribution channel, marketing channel, and uh, synergy with the list. So, it does tick that box. But it's a completely different business model. However, I started that because COVID stopped me being actually running races. So I found a new challenge within myself to run every day for a year. And then my business bent a lot more. Challenged me to post content every day for a year and just watch the results of doing so. So never shy of a challenge. I did an episode on challenges, plans and goals on a previous episode, which is really, really cool. Sorry to suggest you have a look at that. But that's where this all links together. So this was the challenge that was going to give me the catalyst to, to, to carry on. And with my running, I also like pushing myself out of my comfort zone. So uh, this is where all this kind of came from. And then as a direct result of that, the result was people were asking how I'm doing it. Can you do that for me in terms of I created a system where I just drop my content into a shared folder in G Suite and my team of VAs repurpose it everywhere. And it took a little while to set up, but there is a demand for that. Everyone wants it to be build their personal brand these days, build their business brands. So uh, it seemed obvious, as I've already done the work on it, to uh, to turn that into an agency model towards the back end of the year. So that's kind of how it works. So hopefully, I'll answer your question. To summarise, I do not recommend doing this unless something, unless you're a little bit further down the line. If you're starting a business for the very first time, you're not going to be able to do any of this because you're not going to have existing stuff set up. If you do have an existing business. With distribution channels and marketing channels, and you have a list, and a new opportunity presents itself, you can almost consider it as an old, as a new revenue stream, 
as opposed to a, uh, a completely new business. It may be a new business. But when you consider it as a new stream, revenue stream, and drop it into your existing infrastructure, it becomes more manageable. The final thing to add to this is, uh, is the you need to have the ability to prioritise. So however you slice and dice it, running multiple businesses, you have to put them into an order of importance. And they should be linked to how close they are to achieving the goals that you've set. So what I mean by that is, you should have a, this one's number one because we're closest to the goal, number two, number three, number four, depending on how, how far progressed they are as an opportunity. And then you need to have a prioritisation metric in each of those businesses on how you, you manage your existing workload. That will then stop you getting overwhelmed because you can then uh, basically look at your workload, break it up by business, and then look at the most important stuff in each business before you move on to the next. And look at stuff that's urgent and what stuff isn't urgent, and that's how you can kind of prioritise effectively. So, lots and lots of value in this, hopefully. Summarise, don't start multiple businesses until you have one established already, and then only start new ones if they fit in with your existing infrastructure, marketing, distribution, and list. And uh, three, if you can systemise that business first and then step away and give your sole focus on something, you want even better. And uh, four, when running multiple businesses, you need a really robust prioritisation mechanism to avoid entrepreneurial anxiety, overwhelm, and stress. So, hope that's useful. As always, any questions, drop me a comment. Bigger topic, I'll do a blog, 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 blog episode and tag you in. It's not for you, just I'm fellow, I'm fellow, I'm friendly. Uh, but do check out my Facebook group, Rompreneur, or YouTube channel, Kevin Britton, uh, Rompreneur, where all my 110 plus episodes are um, categorised by, by topic, and you can use it as an ad hoc free resource indefinitely. So hopefully there'll be some stuff in there that will be useful when you need it. So that's it for with me today. As always, stay positive, stay happy, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.